All right, Trey, we're live on video. Stand by for audio. All right. Good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Live the Fuel show. So this evening, I'm bringing on a new co-host for you. And uh, this gentleman got connected through the power of, I don't know, influential networking, however you want to brand that these days. But shout out to Mary Shores, who's now been on the show twice. And she said, I have to reach out to this gentleman. So let me catch you up on the skinny on this guy. He's actually a fellow East Coaster, which I'm excited about. It's usually I'm talking to like other countries and time zones. So this gentleman is a 30-something-year-old dad of three. Got me beat. Dad of none except for a dog here. Uh, but living in the suburbs of Baltimore, Maryland. Shout out to Baltimore. Absolutely love it there. I have partied in Inner Harbor many times. Uh, but his wife, Marissa, is a labor and delivery nurse. Love the medical profession. And uh, together they are striving like most working class families, to find happiness and balance. Uh, but there's a lot more to this gentleman which we're going to get into today. And he's also, let me shout out to a fellow podcaster. Uh, he's the, actually the host and uh, owner, creator, founder, whatever you want to go with here, of Your Superior Self. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Trey Downs, sir. What's going on, Scott? Thanks for having me on, brother. I really do appreciate it. Yes, and, and we're... Uh, you know, popping the cherry, so to speak, in regards to you've actually, you've not been on other podcasts, have you? No, I have not. I, I, yes. this, I've, I'm up to 36 episodes of my own podcast, and this is my first uh, uh, collaborative effort, if, 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 you know, you can call it that. Yeah. So well, I want to say thanks for having me on, man. I'm, I'm super excited, and, and, and shout out to Baltimore. I'm actually uh -huh. sitting here drinking a Monument City Brewing Company beer. I oh, look at that. <laughs> uh, not yet sponsored, but I did throw them a little shout out today. So maybe something's in the works. I don't know. Now, is that one of the, like a more of a localized kind of like homebrew type of yeah. Uh, situation? Yeah, it's, it's brewed right here in the city. Okay. Um, but it's called Battle IPA, you know, because we have Federal Hill, Hill here where, you know, the Francis Scott Key and the, and the um, Star Spangled Bannered was written. So we're, we're very into our uh, history here in Baltimore. I respect that because I, li I live here in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and I've gone to Baltimore many times. And I love the history of here in the Northeast and uh, two cities over with Allentown, Bethlehem, Easton. That's why mm -hmm. the airport code for our airport here is ABE, Allentown, mm -hmm. Bethlehem, Easton. Easton their inner circle, each city has like an inner circle, but the inner circle in downtown Easton, there's a big monument there. And that was famous because that was one of the locations when the Declaration of Independence had been like, in its journey. They had paused to read it in the circle mm -hmm. many, many mm -hmm. years ago. A little history buff there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you listen to uh, hardcore history at all? Oh, no, but uh, I like the fact he used hardcore in his branding. That means he's really committed. <laughs> he or she, sorry, is it he? Uh, I cannot remember his name. So like okay. I listen to it because it goes back to, uh, it's very, it's, it's like storytelling. It, he, oh man, I cannot believe I cannot remember his name right now. I have to Google All right. It. That's why we have, uh, um, that's why we have the internet. Hardcore, <laughs> hardcore I will look for a while. Is his name, um, Dan Carlin? Yes. 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 He, he um, like, so my favorite one where, where is where he's talking about World War II and he talks about some of the, uh, Japanese, um, soldiers that uh continue fighting for 30 years after the war had ended hmm. um they, they found him they found them actually uh in the philippines um they didn't know the war was over they kept fighting for 30 years and they did not stop until they were quote unquote relieved by their their captains yes and wasn't there one man left behind that never gave yep. up that one yep. japanese yep. soldier Yep. There's actually a, a, I know this quite story. a few. Yeah. It's quite a few. And he talked about that on his podcast. And I, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, can you imagine to, in today's world, like this is taking a, a typical American guy, middle-class, whatever. Do you think they would have gone 30 years and, and fought their own battle? Like, I mean, come on, think about that. Dude. I, uh, yeah, it's funny you bring this up. Um, because this is going to be a very fresh episode for for us. So, uh, <laughs> I, I went Facebook live the other day because I have no problem going live. My fiance calls me on that all the time. She's like, what is with you and going live all the time? And I'm like, I just keep it real, all right? So um, I, I decide to vent, you'll appreciate this, about where, where, you're, where you're going with this is integrity and work ethic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hearing, it, yep. it, it, honestly. So 
but it's, it's a different genre. It's a different generation. It's a different ethnicity. It's a different way of life. Like I studied uh, Okinawan martial arts when I was younger, mm -hmm. a whole different level of training. Uh, my one sensei, Sensei Sani, used to beat me with a bamboo stick when I wasn't listening. What? Uh, yeah, that's awesome. I learned <laughs> a lot. <laughs> it's like, I mean, not, not in like a very aggressive, like beat down way, but yeah. you know, he's like, you know, I, he'd come up behind me. He's so sneaky. He'd come up behind you just whack right across the back of the knees or the calves. I can't remember which one hurt more. Uh, but luckily with our gi on, the gi was like more of a canvas style material. So it yeah. took some of the hit. But, you know, if you didn't like react enough or drop down right away, like he, he made sure the next go around, he'd get a little more into it. <laughs> <laughs> so did you, ever, did you ever get waterboarded is what my next question is. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I feel like that might take it a little too far. I, I don't know. Have you tried? Your, the legs, your legs not high enough. Come here. <laughs> Come on in the bathroom. Yeah, but sorry. Towel over the face. Let's, uh, let's, you're just not really focused in your training. Scott, <laughs> terrible discipline, Scott. Yes. Uh, I, I was a very high energy child. Uh, now I'm just a high energy adult. So uh, <laughs> clearly the training did focus me, uh, but it did not remove the, the energy from my, my, for, my life force. So sure, sure. Uh, but that gentleman, man, that, th those stories, those soldiers who did that. That's what, so to connect this all together. Basically, earlier this week, I, I had gotten home. And uh, part of my brand, right, fire in the logo is I'm a former wildland firefighter from out west. So I, I served one of the elite hotshot crews. And right now there's some tragic fires in California that burned thousands of homes. This California's kind of used to it by now, but this one's officially, these mm -hmm. two fires are the worst in that state's history. And I'm seeing all kinds of political crap going on. I can't stand the politics, right? Everybody's like, oh, they, they assume they know what the hell they're talking about. And that's, that set me off. And then obviously there was the shootings in California earlier that week. That was tragic. Uh, one of my clients lives like a mile down the road from the fire and the shootings. Crazy. So I just, and, and right now we, we've been trying to save our dog's life. I had to, we had to cut his leg off a couple of weeks ago to save him from cancer, turn him into a tripod. Then mm -hmm. he was going through like partial renal failure because of the damn drugs they put him on for the pain relievers. Like, so, so far today we're, we're bouncing back. So uh, this is real time updates for you. <laughs> wow, dude. So I got all this going on, right? Cause I know you got a lot going on. It's your, sure. you know, so it's like, okay. I decided it's like, you know what? I'm just going to vent <laughs> on Facebook live because I think a lot of people don't realize that not everybody's life is perfect. Mm -hmm. Shocker. Yeah, and right. I think in, especially in the social media uh, space, it's very easy for us to only share what makes sense right now or what is filtered. And sometimes I think it's really crucial that we realize that, you know, a podcaster like yourself and a podcaster like me, something as simple as a podcast, not just a social media space, but we do create, end up creating followers and, uh, and we end up literally falling into this role as an influencer. So I decided to just go on Facebook live and just, I lost my shit. And uh, <laughs> I just said, you know what guys, I'm sick and tired of, uh, of people who think they know what they're talking about and they stick their nose in this stuff. They haven't, they didn't at least take, take five, 10 minutes and do a little research. People just spout off and think they know what they're talking about. And they, the hotshot creed uh, is part of the hotshot creed is three key words, duty, respect, and integrity. And I actually have them tattooed on my ribs. Really? And uh, so I take that very, very seriously. So that's kind of full circle for you uh, sure. because the, when, as soon as you brought up, trying to fathom somebody today committing like that soldier did generations ago, duty, respect, integrity is what pops into my brain. Mm. So, so, what, so what, it's powerful. Like exactly. Like I don't feel like today's generation has that type of commitment. Like it's always what is owed to me. Like mm. I am, I was born in 83. So like I'm teetering on that line. Yeah. You're more cusp. Like I'm yeah. 77. So okay. I'm 41. Um, I would definitely say you're closer to the Gen X side of the spectrum. So there is, and again, as I told you before the show, this is, I try and influence, positively influence and guide the, the Gen X in, into that millennial genre, right? Sure, yeah. And so technically you're, I guess you, you're technically in the millennial generation, mm -hmm. but you're not like the newer I'm like the old millennial. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, 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 you're like old school millennial. <laughs> Hair's receding. Like I'm like, I'm still listening in to like Dr. Dre and Tupac. I'm like, yeah, I'm cool, man. I'm Is millennial. that millennial? Oh, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, mean, I, don't know. Like, I like the old stuff, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I like the old, I'm like the millennial, like the old guy. Okay. The old millennial. Oh, no. got it. I love those guys. Now, did you listen to any Nirvana at all? 
Yeah, for okay, sure. All right, all yeah. right, all I right. mean, I like, I like a weird mix. So it's like, it was like, and I grew up in Delaware. So Southern yep. Delaware, near the beaches. Uh, like down by Dewey? Uh, Dewey, Fenwick Island. I like yeah. Florida down there. Um, my, friends I, go down, my friends go down Dewey all the time. Oh yeah, it's a party. It's the party beach. It's uh, my brother. My brother used to um, bartend at the lighthouse and Rusty Rudder and all that good stuff. And okay. it, was, it was so weird because down in Sussex County, it's like a mixing pot of like different like cultures it's it's like you got the the people that grew up there who are country uh they listen to nothing but country uh and then you have the the tourists that come in and they bring in the, like the dc vibe the baltimore vibe the rap mix the the alternate alt rock um hmm. you know, uh dc 101 then you got you know um what is it i can't remember what the uh the other stuff is but i like grew up with this um this mix of like music so like i hmm. loved um nirvana i loved um at every um, album 311 uh, oh yeah i saw it live a couple times yeah and how i about, loved how about any rusted root mixed in there no nah, not so no? much no okay. no but then i saw the, it live one time the percussion was <laughs> The drum so so solos were just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So I can name everything pretty much in that country genre as you know, but the older stuff. So like Hank Williams Jr., all yeah. that good stuff, Trace Atkins, all those older guys, and then the rap stuff, like I was into, you know, um the old like Big E, Tupac, all that kind of stuff. So I'm like an older millennial, yeah. but I still respect Did you watch the documentary film on all that? Oh yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. My yes, fiance and I would love that. That was awesome. Absolutely. So we're dating it, ourselves. <laughs> Like millennial, when people say millennials now, it's just like, ah, not that young, but you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. If it means I'm it's interesting because we're talking about millennials and I feel like it, it, it's, it's like everybody's forgotten about Gen X. Like they don't even, I don't even hear people talking about, like, I feel like I have to include it in my branding to make sure we don't disappear sure. <laughs> because well, I don't think people understand it though. I don't, it's under either baby boomers yeah. and, or they go right to the Gen X because well, let's be real. I think the, I think the, sorry, sorry, right to millennial, not right to Gen X, uh, because the next largest generation is really the closest of the two population wise yeah. is the millennial to the baby boomer. Yep. So there, we are a smaller sector, uh, in between. So mm -hmm. like, I think we absorb Gen Y like, that. Do, you remember, do you remember Gen Y? Yeah. 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 <laughs> what, which generation had the flannel shirt? I don't know. I'm rocking and flannels. Airwalks. And airwalks and, Ooh. uh, Jenko's. Oh, dude! I actually owned a pair of Jankos once. I had one pair. And <laughs> I had one pair. I, that's all I. That's 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 all I had was one pair because that's it. I, I was scared to death to buy any more. Like I was dude, just. Dude, like, I was a uh, one of my side hustles I, years ago. I was a bouncer at a bar for for like three years, and like the, I think the last year, all of a sudden the Jankos got big, and I liked how much I could move in them. It kind of yeah. got me flashing back to when I was a kid in karate because the geese had a lot of space in the leg. For, for kicking sure so i was like man I, have, I got all this room to move so i <laughs> i was wearing them bouncing uh now granted i never had to roundhouse anybody but it was just so nice to have all that room but you had that option if you could you if you had to you could with the jenkos like you oh man you could drop into a full full max depth squat and your butt cheeks are tickling the floor like that i mean you had such a range of motion <laughs> and the haircuts back then were phenomenal like oh yeah the shit, it was like you grew the top out really long and then the underneath it was shaved, shaved and it, yep. put it in the ponytail. Like, yeah. Or you didn't do the ponytail. I, I had yeah. a, I don't know what you called it. I think I called it, I think it would call it nowadays like a flop. Like I parted down the middle, super oh, yeah. long, like I had it down here. I, my fiance can't even fathom me having hair like that because I have it more cut short. Yeah. And, uh, I, I got I to gotta go back and find a photo. I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me ask you this. Were you ever into wrestling? Like a lot of my wrestling. friends were into wrestling. Um, I never did it as a sport. You mean like like high no, school? I'm talking about, no, I'm talking about like w, I'm talking about NWO and WCW oh. <laughs> and WWF. Okay, so like yeah, uh, what was the guy with the face paint? Um, Sting? No, 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 no. Ultimate Warrior. Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, I was that generation. So I, I don't know if that I helps. Was, I was, uh, and hopefully your listeners can uh, relate to this. Uh, NWO pre WWE. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. NW, NWO New World Order was my shit. Like that was I was legitimately trying to join the NWO. Like I remember getting <laughs> applications. Wait, don't, don't tell me. Did you guys do backyard shit? Oh yeah. Ah, uh, trampolines like, like, in the backyard. Crap. Like how people? How did how did us kids not break spines, dude? 
I'm telling like, you right now. Like my hometown, <laughs> and this is a shout out to them. We actually have two um, professional wrestlers come out of my hometown in Laurel, Delaware. They are the Briscoe Brothers. Here. Yes, Brisk- Briscoe Brothers. Look them up. They're actually uh, they actually hold a title. Um, I can't remember which uh, federation it is. I think it's like ah, they're gonna kill me, but. Uh, they're actually tag teams. This is why I have video and we can screen share for YouTube. So, yeah. um, Briscoe I, Brothers. I, I spelled them wrong. So it's B R I S C S S. Sorry, B R I S C O E. Yes. Um, here's the question, though: Are they good enough where they have their own brand and website? Because that would be awesome. They should. I mean, they should be in there. Uh, well, they've got a Reddit feed. <laughs> <laughs> Let me uh, just check it out. They're on Wikipedia. Are they? Wow. Well, right. People, people writing Wikipedia pages. Here we go. Screen share. All right, Briscoe Brothers. Yeah, that's him. That's him. Yeah. Jay Briscoe and Mark Briscoe. Yeah. That's oh, him. but they have. I, that's not their real name. Okay. No, 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 no. They're. They, I, I don't want to say their real name because yeah. I don't know. It, who it says are. Pew. It says right here on Wikipedia. It, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. Pew Brothers. Yeah. P U G H. Yeah. Yeah. I just, yeah. Well, you can't hide it. It's right there. Yeah, well, I just, I just saw it. So I didn't want to like drop their names and then like. So R O H. Uh, so what is yeah, that? R O H. Ring of Honor. That's what it is. Ring of Ring of Honor. I can't even keep up with all these. Fe- is that a federation? Yeah. I, I That's never a even thing. Of like they just, they, I mean, they go, they go to Japan. They just, they, uh, they were up in Baltimore not too long ago. Get out of here. Um, yeah. So I mean, they're actually tag team uh, champions right now. now. Obviously, they're not as big as like this federation is not as big as like. No, I think, but I think actually right now it's WWE now. I guess yeah, 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 yeah. But they, they actually have a pay per view though. So they they were uh, oh. last time they were on. Uh, yeah, they were on a pay per view. So wow. I remember going to they. Um, we played football together, uh, and I remember watching videos like they had homemade videos of them actually jumping off of their house, um, doing like um, <laughs> like backflips onto their each other with like plywood and two uh, you know construction horses and like. I mean, it was crazy. Like these okay, guys, yeah. these guys are nuts. Like uh, this is, we used to go to their house and play Madden, watch them cage fight, but uh, they're the real deal as far as uh, I'm wow. concerned. This is a little ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. That's from my hometown, Laurel, Delaware, right there. <laughs> See, I, so yes, I do not keep up with wrestling. That sums that up because I don't even know what the heck an ROH was. So um, NWO, that's all you need to know. New World okay. Order. So Paul wait, Curry. so so what are the parent brands over everything? I know WWE is the biggest, is and then is it New World Order is the competing? No, no. So it used to be WCW, WWF. Well, the and, WWF is what I remember. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. They, they all kind of merged together and created WWE. Okay. So it's all just one thing, but like the Ring of Honor is like a like a smaller brand of that. So it's okay. not really they're not up to um, WWE yet, but you know. It's just, it's like the, um, you know, the New York Yankees of wrestling is WWE. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> Hold on a second. Do, do they still have this redneck theme? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, pardon the term, but this, this is the graphic. Here you go. <laughs> yes. Stand up. <laughs> yes. You should, you should watch them on YouTube. It's pretty, pretty hilarious. Their dad so, actually gets in there too. It's, it's pretty, pretty Their awesome. what? Their dad. Get out like, of here. Yeah. His, their dad like does the role playing with them and it's pretty cool. Uh, uh, we're, that, we're gonna have to tag these guys in the show notes for the website because every, every anytime anytime I mention any type of influencers, I mean clearly they have some level of influence. So sure, but we, we name drop on the show, they're getting tagged. So absolutely, go ahead, tag them out. This will be the first time I've tagged wrestlers in a podcast history. So <clears throat> I've been doing this for over two years now. That's awesome, dude. So, so you're you're you're, uh, you're breaking some cherries on my end here. <laughs> I just hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> oh yeah, it was, it was worthwhile. So listen. I think it's funny that you and I actually, well, what is that? Three years, three years. So we only have six years apart. Mm-hmm. And it's funny how we do have common ground. A lot of people think six years is a lot of time. And it really isn't. So uh, granted, if I was talking to a 21 year old right now, I'd have 20 years on them. <laughs> so that they, there might be more of a gap there. Mm-hmm. Um, so since let's, let's kind of rewind back to that little hint on the millennial factor. So do you find like with your show, and where you're at being a dad of three and, and trying to be that, I mean, I don't know, let me, let me throw it out there. Your superior self, right? Mm-hmm. Are you trying to create influence in a positive way with that? I am trying to reach like the blue collar workers, like okay. the, uh, the blue collar entrepreneurs. So like when I was, I'm a blue collar guy, like straight, straight up. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, your superior self 
dot com. I'm gonna do some screen sharing while you you go ahead, Trey. So absolutely. So I shot. grew up. Thank you. Uh, I grew up as a third generation railroader. Uh, my dad and my grandfather both were locomotive engineers. I became a locomotive engineer. Love my job. Don't get me wrong. Um, very blue collar, uh, shift work, and uh, you know I just follow their path, right? Okay. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm just gonna admit, it. I, I crave their affection growing up. I crave their love, and it was only through if I did things that they really enjoyed that obviously they would like pay attention and kind of give me that uh, that attention that I wanted. Yeah. So um, I think a lot of us do that, and so about probably ten years into my career that I started thinking to myself, man, like, I mean, I was content up to a point, but then something inside of me was like, you can do something else. You can, I don't know what it is. Uh, you can do something better. So yeah, I started to, you know, read a couple books on, on uh, investing because I really wasn't uh, well diverse in that area. I was kind of scared of it because I didn't understand it. So wait a minute, I, hold on a second. You mean to tell me our, our, our educational system doesn't teach us no, no. Uh, anything about investing, let alone entrepreneurship. No, it doesn't. All it teaches you, I'm, I'm serious. All it teaches you how to do is remember something for a test. <laughs> well, let's take it to it one step further. It take, it, it does teach you blatant memorization, yeah. um, which basically is robotics, right? Mm -hmm. Which in turn, cause I, I was a product of this teaches you to be a great employee. Absolutely. But independent thought. No. Mm -hmm. Yep, Independent uh, creation, creating side hustles, creating that self-education. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge advocate for self-development, personal development, professional development. Uh, I, I mean, I'm a product of it. I mean, mm -hmm. what I've taken risks on over the years, I've had to put in motion myself. We have to take accountability for that ourselves. Yeah, can't absolutely. can't expect to hand that shit to us. Right? No, no. Is that, what, is that what triggered you for the investing research? Like, oh shit, no one's going to teach this to me. I better figure this out. Well, of course, I get a... a, a a job with a company that offers a 401k and they're like, all right, we'll just put it in the, the 2050 fund. All right, fine. So, you know, a couple of years, 13 years go by and I'm like, man, like there's gotta be, I can't just plug and play stuff every time in my life. I have to be able to create my own thoughts, make my own decisions. And that's when I started learning more about investment. And that's when I took my money and I started investing for myself and making my own decisions, my own risks and, and calculating that. Nice. And, it helped, and it really helped me. And that gave me the spark inside of myself to kind of like, you know what, what else is out there? What else can I do? So I started researching different things. I started researching um, communication because I took a management job uh, two years ago and it makes me, uh, I have to do like presentations and, and conference calls and, and public speaking stuff. So I, I, public speaking was always a fear for me. Like it always was a fear. Communicating was always a fear because I wasn't very good at it. Which, if it, it, you know, let's pause in there real quick. Uh, I took a public speaking course. My very first one was freshman year at Penn State. Uh, and I was paying my own way through school. I was working full time while going to school full time uh, at a local Penn State campus. So it wasn't like I was, you know, like a traditional college student. Uh, I even dropped off a little while before I went back years later. But the point is, is that I took that public speaking course. Yeah, it scared the shit out of me. But then it's funny because I fast forward years later and I now speak on stage and I have a podcast and I was joking around. I go Facebook live whenever I feel like it. So, but you know, it, it, it takes like anything else you put in the reps, like going to the gym and you, you focus on the form and technique and things will get better. But I find it's interesting because day in and day out, we are public speaking. Mm -hmm. like as soon as you step out of your house, you're out talking to the mailman or your coworkers or friends. And it's like, you're speaking in public. The only difference is we're making it more formalized. Sure. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so I started to think of ways, think of different ways that I could improve myself that I, I thought that I could do. Like I am, I get nervous, right? Everybody gets nervous. Everybody gets, I think it's natural. Yeah. Everybody gets clams up. They don't know what to say. They don't know what thoughts are coming through their mind. So like I didn't go take a class after that. I, you know what I did? I started podcasting. I started this, I started your superior self because I met so many of my peers that were, were kind of like on cruise control. They were waiting for the 30 year mark to retire in their pension. Like that's it. They were plug and play. I'm going to, you're, you're on the treadmill. So yeah, speak. absolutely. And yeah. it was like, you guys like wake up, like you guys, like so many of my friends have so many talents. They, they just don't know. Like I have a friend that is a, a brilliant artist, but he chooses not to do anything with it. I have a friend that for fun, he reads physics books and, and I'm sorry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. Yes. Hold on. Yes. You have a friend for fun. 
Yes. Reads physics. Yes. Like the science. Yes. Books. Reads it for fun, but he's a blue collar <laughs> guy. He's 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 in this. He's on the treadmill right now. He's on cruise control. Like he doesn't see this. Like he likes that kind of stuff. And I'm like, look, man, we are the creators of our own success. Like wake up to it. Realize that, you know what? If you fail in pursuing your dreams, you fail. And guess what? It's okay. It's not really failing. You get to learn. Dream, plan, do. Yes. You can have the dreams and you can sit there and plan, but you have to do something. You have to take action sooner or later. And the biggest problem there goes back to your point was fear, right? Mm-hmm. And the whole the only way to get easier with fear is to start taking the risks and making the mistakes. The mistakes is what teach you the most powerful things because mm-hmm. they have the most emotion tied to them. Mm-hmm. You'll never forget those mistakes you made and what you've learned to make sure you don't do them again. Yeah. I mean, well, Thomas, anyway. well Thomas Edison, what took him 10,000 times. Yeah. To right? create something like, like look at now, now, now we we love our, our light bulbs, right? It's like, a- yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now they're LED. I mean, come on. I'm anti LED. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously, I have all incandescent. I don't give a shit about my electric bill because uh, I I can get into the science. He's balling, he's balling right now. He's, I can I can get into the health behind it. I can. I, I had a world renowned uh, neuro neurosurgeon and neuroscientist on the show. He's still the most downloaded episode ever. Really? That's now, awesome. Oh yeah, dude. He's like, dude, the, the, the negative impacts of those frequencies of an LED bulb on your eyes impacting sleep, health, brain health, everything. No way. I'm getting rid of mine. Yep. Well, or worst case scenario, do this. Hold on, we're gonna. Oh, look you at that. Those are? Look at that. No, blue, I don't. They look good. Blue blocking glasses. That's so a... these block the blue light frequencies that light give off. Blue light comes off of your smartphones, iPads, television, any technology, but, uh, lights. Mm-hmm. And it basically, the blue light frequency, we're going to geek out right now. I've done this many times in the show. But I love to pass this on. Sure. Blue light frequency is identical to the sun. Mm-hmm. So what you're doing is in the evening is you're teaching your brain that you're not ready to go to sleep and you're, it's still daytime. Mm. So when people sit there and play with their, their phones while watching TV, like my fiance does every night. And uh, <laughs> that's why I bought her a pair. Uh, I was like, listen, if you're going to keep doing it, I mean, listen, very highly intelligent woman. And she's a, you know, I'm going to leave you someone. I should be wearing them anyway. It's nighttime. Um, <laughs> She, highly intelligent woman, uh, doctor. Uh, she's a equine doctor for horses, a uh, horse vet, doctor of chiropractic for animals. Smart girl, dude. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't sure. know how the, I don't know how the hell I landed her, uh, but <laughs> but she loves playing the mind games on the iPad, which are like puzzles and stuff, and then has the TV on. So I was like, all right, you're wearing some blue blockers. Keep doing your thing. And she she wonders why she has sleeping problems. I'm sure. like, okay. Anyway, I'm done with my, my rant. <laughs> well, I can't I can't sleep because I drink too much coffee. I mean, like, dude, I'm telling you right now. Like, yeah, you know that you, you want to remove again. This is stimulants. Yeah. That's a stimulant. So you want to reduce the amount of stimulants before bed. So, yeah. yep, absolutely, uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, but basically, that so that uh, his name is Dr. Jack Cruz. That's the guy I'm talking about. Sure. And, and the oh, three fundamentals of his science are water, light, and magnetism. Mm. So. Water, obviously hydration, uh, lights, like these different frequencies. For example, the op- he does obviously highly recommend daylight, but a lot of people are stuck in an office all day and then don't get out into the sunlight until the sun is setting at the end of the day. And you wonder why a lot of people stuck in offices have a very unhealthy lives. Sure. Just throwing that out there. I, uh, I just interviewed um, Miwash Parabola on my, on my podcast. Um, I call him Milo. He's he's rebranding his name, so it's he's going by his natural name of Miwash Parawola. And uh, he, oh dear is, lord, yeah. Hold on, I was I just saw his name on your site. Let's do a little screen share again. Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. On your you, yeah. There we go. There's your yeah. podcast feed, right there. He, yeah, he used to be a New York attorney, um, living that life every day, going in and hating life. Uh, saw his future down the road of his bosses, you know, 20, 30 years from now, that's where he was going to be. And one day he said, screw it, man. I'm not doing, I can't do this anymore. I'm not, I'm not happy about where I'm at. I'm not excited about work. Yeah. He goes out and becomes a like, like explorer, a modern day explorer. He 
goes out and he, what he does for money is he'll go out and test these brands, these clothing in these extreme temperatures and he writes reviews and he has his own, I think he has a, his own podcast. I'm not sure, but uh, if, he, he has, if he doesn't, he should, but I mean, yeah, he should great. for sure. He has his own blog and he, guy's brilliant. Like think about that. Like you go from a, a, a New, New York attorney to modern day explorer. Like you right now are living your best life. Yeah. There he, takes, he, he takes drones with him. He goes out there and, and you know, photography is big for him, selling his images. Um, the guys, oh, he and I would get along great. Oh, yeah, dude. I, I'm, I'm sure. a huge outdoors nut. I have all the gear. And I've always joked around that what, what you're referring to is he's a gear tester. Yeah. And yep. a lot of companies, if you got to, especially if you build a decent social media following and everything else, people, they just, they'll just send you the gear for free. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, I could have been a, I could have been a great gear. When I was doing the wildland firefighting out West, man, I had all the gear. I was like, dude, I, if I would have known what I know now, I should have been posting all that stuff <laughs> and tagging the companies. So when you were out there firefighting, were you digging like the uh, trenches or uh, around it? Yeah, that's how you, you can't put a wildfire out. You have to contain it. So, so you, I know hot shot, hot shot crews are the elite. There's, there's smoke jumpers and hot shots. And then everybody else is just a regular type two while in firefighter, which includes hell attack and all the other divisions, but hot shots, they hike in and smoke mm -hmm. jumpers skydive in. So mm -hmm. either way you're those crews, there's only 105 hot shot crews in the nation. Last time I checked. Uh, so there's only 2000 of us. So, um, yeah, so we, you're we actually to, digging down, down, right? Like, I think it's like what, 13 inches or something to get down to the minerals. Uh, nah, no. I mean, you are digging basically a hiking path around a fire. Um, you go in with, uh, on average, at least two to three saw teams. Uh, I, I ran a chainsaw as well. So you're, you're hiking with a 25-pound you know, chainsaw on your shoulder, 40, 50-pound pack. Uh, you, you're doing a 16-hour shift on the fire line. You do a two weeks straight before you get a day off because uh, that's for medical reasons. Make sure you get enough, you get your two days of medical recovery, and then you're right back at it again. Sure. Um, and you want to talk about intense blue collar. There you go. You don't, sh I mean, never fires that in the shower for two weeks. Dude, uh, that's, that's some tough stuff. That's tough. Like, you are <laughs> well, so There's a movie about it now. So, um, because unfortunately in 2013, brothers of mine were killed in 2013, uh, the Grand Mountain Hotshots in Arizona, the entire crew was burned over. Only one man was left alive because he was in a lookout position. So he was lucky enough to get to the safety zone and, and get evac'd out of there. Unfortunately, <clears throat> the rest of his crew uh, were trapped in a canyon and they had to deploy their fire shelters and try and basically ride it out. But unfortunately, the canyon was shaped like a sea. Mother oh, Nature uh, shifted the wind, sealed off the canyon, and created a vortex. Superheated the canyon, and they didn't survive. So all, all 19 uh, were killed. That's so, terrible. That's yeah, terrible. So I do charity workouts in their honor every year here on the East Coast in their memory. is we're big, It's very big in the CrossFit space. I'm a CrossFit trainer. Um, mm. So... CrossFit creates uh, heroes workouts in honor of fallen military, police, fire. You know, in sure. this case, we have one called Hot Shots 19. Uh, I was one of the people that petitioned CrossFit to create it. So, mm. yeah, That's all, that, that is amazing that you do that. Like, I am trying to get involved in, in like more of an outreach program. Um, I also had a interview with a guy named Chris Schaefer on my podcast. Is he is the um, creator of Sharp Dressed Man? which is he's a tailor here in Baltimore and I take that very seriously these days. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, like I mean, people understand the power of getting a properly tailored shirt. I can't yeah. stand blousing when people like the, the shirts billowing out of your belt buckle. I'm like, <laughs> dude, tailoring it's 10 bucks. Just spend the $10. <laughs> he, he is a custom tailor. He has some legit suits. He actually started a nonprofit called sharp dress man. Mm. And what he does is I think it's every Wednesday night or so he will go down to his um, storefront down uh, sharp dress man and he will tailor suits for um, guys that are recovering addicts, um, homeless. So that I love way, stories like this. Yeah, they, they go out and they, they're able to get uh, interviews. They're able to go out and get a job possibly. Um, and it's all donations. So he, he just moved to a new location. I helped him move. And let me tell you something, just moving him, like I didn't really do too much, but I mean, obviously heavy, heavy lifting, but like actually helping him do something that was for a great cause like that, like lit my heart on fire, bro. Like, I mean, that was probably the best feeling in the world is giving back for, and I didn't expect anything in return. No, and that's, so you understand you're, you're, you're defining some of the principles behind live the fuel. Um, in your 
when you apply to uh, my, your details to come on the show, I noticed that one of your favorite authors is Ernest Hemingway. Mm. Uh, one of the quotes you shared with me was, uh, there's nothing noble in being superior to your fellow men. Uh, true nobility lies in being superior to your former self. Um, mm. So I like that whole, you know, become superior over your former self, self-improvement, professional development. So one of my favorite quotes from Ernest Hemingway was, live life to the fullest. And that was my favorite quote while I was firefighting. So when I decided to create Live the Fuel, I created my own version of that. That quote inspired that, and I created live the fired up epic life, which is mm. live the fuel spelled out. That's what fuel stands for is fired up epic life. So I love that. I love uh, that. Actually your superior self. My podcast is actually a tribute to Ernest Hemingway in that quote. Um, he's my favorite author. I love his books, just his life in general. Like I wish I could just sit down with him, have a bourbon and just talk some crazy, you know, what have you done? Dude, like, can you what imagine is, those conversations? No, I can't. You can't even fathom it. Like, what, like would, what one question that you would you could ask Ernest Hemingway right now? What would you ask him? Honestly, I would tie it back to that quote, and I would ask him, "When you think of your quote, live life to the fullest, what is the one most simplest way you've done that in your life?" Just one example, because yeah. I mean, I, not everybody knows everything that he did in his life, yeah. Yeah. and I don't need fifty examples. I just need one. And I mean, just his writings and his, and his quotes alone have inspired millions of people. But it's like, if I, I want to hear that one moment, like that one moment in his life, actually, let me, let me dig a little deeper on that. I actually want to know what is the moment in his life that inspired that quote? Oh, that's right? deep, dude. That's deep. Like, like, what, like what drove that quote? Something significant uh, inspired a powerful quote like that. Was it when you were running down, you know, with the bulls? Were you, was it when you were you know, hammered in Paris looking at, you know, the Eiffel tower. Like what was, when was it like that? That's exactly what I want to know. Like, that's perfect. Like, exactly. Just, it's like, perfect. dude, like, I don't need a story back. I just like, okay, what was that one moment? That's sick. Yeah. Cause like, uh, I mean, those words are taken so casually, you know, but like, for example, hold on here, since you don't know my whole backstory, I'll, I'll get a little screen share for you. First of all, let me, let me, first of all, let me do a proper before this isn't about me. Sharpest <laughs> man. Uh, does he, is that his brand? Is that his website or that is, it should be his nonprofit. He has Chris Schaefer would, would be his brand. What's his last name? Chris Schaefer. Schaefer, like S C H A E F I R or yeah. 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 Let's see what we got here. Sometimes they're S C H. Sometimes they're S H. There we go. Uh, all right. Let me see if you recognize this. Yep. That's it. That's them? That's them. So sharpdressman.org, ladies and gentlemen. Most not-for-profits are .org. That's a little FYI if you ever decide to register your own. Uh, but passion, experience, and diligence. Great mm -hmm. word choice. I like diligence. Yeah, he was actually my first in-studio interview. Um, he lives actually right up the road from me. And uh, great there dude, great dude. His son's out, actually out in in LA right now they're starting up their uh, their second store out there oh he's um, going west coast okay yeah, he's going west coast he's actually um, a great dude I remember uh, for marketing that's his son right there Seth there you go. Uh, he actually I remember him actually being in Inner Harbor like as a kid in a suit skateboarding like they're big s skaters too uh, <laughs> skateboarding in a suit and it, people would just walk up and be like well, where'd you get that suit yeah of course you know Chris Schaefer you know yeah. Taylor, you know, and it was great. It was great for the brand. Well, I, I, I just got, I have, see, it's funny thing is like, I, another great quote. Um, oh God. So now I'm going to blank on a name. Uh, <laughs> founder of Virgin. Oh, uh, Branson. Um, yes. Or, you know, uh, yes. I'm actually Branson. reading his book. I'm actually reading his book right now. Yeah. Which, oh, this newest one. Yeah. Uh, no, that, what is it? The, uh, Virgin way. I think it is. Yeah. I don't think, is it his new one? No, it's not the newest one, but yeah, it's still a bit more current one. Anyway, one of his famous quotes, I, it's not word for word, but I, this is the way I use it. I say, I want to make my money in jeans and spend it in a suit. Oh. Because flip years ago when I was in the corporate space before firefighting, I was chasing the money and chasing the promotions and chasing the job titles. And I lost track of what was important. Mm -hmm. And all I was doing, I was, and I was like building up debt you know, overspending stupid shit. Cause I didn't grow up with a lot. So I was like, Oh, all of a sudden I got, I had a clue and I had a good career and I didn't even have my degree done either. I was, I was actually making more than my friends coming out of college. So I just was living with it. 
And I, I used the term keeping up with the Joneses was uh, what I was doing back then. Anyway, um, I like Richard Branson's quote. So I, I, it's funny, I stopped wearing suits. I was like, I'm never going to wear a suit again after 2009. And then I was firefighting in 2010, 2011. I moved out west, gave away, gave away everything I owned. I went from a 2,000 square foot townhouse to a 1999 Subaru Outback. <laughs> so <laughs> bought, bought that for three grand, got rid of the Audi A4 and gave everything else away. So uh, and, I can and, do a, I can do a whole podcast on minimalism. <laughs> well, it, it's all about content, right? It's all about where you're at. Like I was content like 10, 12 years ago doing what I was doing. Um, and if you asked me back then, would you ever consider doing something else? I'd be like, hell no, I'm, I'm good sitting here working here for 30 years, collecting a pension. But now I've changed as a person. Uh, we all change. And my content is, trying to be the best version of myself every day that I could, that I'm alive because it's not promised. It is when I die and leave this earth, I want it to be on my terms. I want to know that I gave everything every day to be the best version of myself, whether it's reading a book, reading about investing, reading about how to create my own business or, or, or anything or whatever makes you happy. Get, you know, if you can't read a, and here's another thing too, you can't read a book, about push-ups and expect to get cut. You have to do the work. Like you have to do the push-ups to get in, in physical condition. Oh yeah, so, I have people all the time like, dude, like when I'm doing burpees and stuff at a workout, and like the one when I when I was coaching a couple of times, I would do like slow motion push-ups to show them this. And push-ups was a standard movement that uh, you had to do well uh, as a hot shot when you show up. Like pull up, strict pull-ups. And push-ups were like two fundamentals because it's been that way since 1910. And that's when Wild and Firefighting was created, by the way. There's a book about it. I got it in my library here. Mm -hmm. But the, um, the, the simple fundamentals were all obviously driven by the military. Everything comes from the military. So the Marine Corps, a book of, of methodology kind of bled over into the firefighting world. Um, but one, one other great quote that I love is, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Mm. And what you just said, all that's your point, right, man? It's like, dude, like I, whether it's reading a book, listening to a podcast, like you, you have to just put your all into stuff. And yes, yeah. still take, give yourself a break once in a while. Don't beat yourself up too much. I'm guilty of it too. I hold myself to a very high standard. And you got to unplug once in a while. The past couple of weeks with our dog and everything else, like that whole Facebook Live thing, I was, you know, I was burning myself out a little bit. I was burning everything on two ends and I knew better. And I... Mm -hmm. I guess like today I, other than I went in for a huge workout at the CrossFit gym and that's all I did. I mean, I, I went out, and I didn't really do much today. Mm -hmm. It was good. Like I needed to just, well, how do go, you go run air? How do you, <laughs> yeah. How do you recenter yourself though? Like you have a lot of emotional, you know, stuff happening to you right now. Like how do you recenter yourself when so you can get back and, and honestly, start? I'll tie this back to what I said earlier, since you don't know my past, here you go. If you, if I could do this, I could do anything. Man, that's crazy. That's powerful so, right there. That was like, I was like, I, it's funny because I have a beard right now and my fiance doesn't like me wearing a beard, but it's, it's no shave November. So I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. you know, creating awareness. We're donating money. Like all my CrossFit buddies at the gym, we're all growing beards out. So, uh, I mean, it's not as big as that beard. <laughs> that, that's a legit that's got, beard. That's, that's healthy. Got, that's got a few months in there, man. That's healthy. Like, is there any, um, that's actually groomed because right before that fire, I think I got it singed and I had to like, eat. Oh, it, I, it got bigger than that. <laughs> wow, dude. Like, is there any skull or Copenhagen in those pockets? Uh, no. Really? I've, nev I've never smoked a cigarette. I've never dipped. I've never done any tobacco products in my life. And believe me, in that job, yeah. holy crap, dude. Like, you'd see the dashboard on the front of our, um, our crew carriers or our superintendent's truck, and mm -hmm. it's like a badge of honor. Like, everybody's got their dip cans lined up in there, all the empty ones throughout the season. It's like a collection thing. Yeah. Like guys are buying, what do they call them? Logs. Logs. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. When, when, when you're that doing was, a, when, you, when you're ready to roll into a fire, there's, there's three things that everybody's stocked up on. Uh, either logs of, what do you call it? Logs of. Skull dip, of Copenhagen. Skull, yeah. Dip, whatever. Yeah. All that stuff. Chew. I call it chew. There you go. Chew. Uh, you either get a log of that and then you're like, you're like a God because people run out like, oh, he's got a couple logs. Right. So there's yeah. a whole. I feel like it's like that prison exchange system where in prison, like you're, you're trading <laughs> cigarettes for money or something. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> like, so skull becomes your currency. And then for me, 
I became like the healthy, uh, like salty snacks guy. So I was buying every flavor of, uh, those, those almonds. Mm. Um, I was getting like the wasabi almonds and like the fiery almonds. I had every, and then another guy on the crew, he would do the, uh, cause he wouldn't, he, he had quit dipping. So he was using, uh, those seeds you crack the shell on in your mouth. And oh, uh, out. sunflower seeds. Yeah. Yeah. But he would not buy them already shucked. You have, cause you need, when you have 16 hours of firefighting, like sometimes you're standing there literally just staring off into the wilderness, making sure no embers fly over your, you know, already dug fire line. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so that's called the black. Everything yeah. burning is the black and everything not burning is the green. So when you get done establishing a line, you got to hold the line. So you literally turn your back to the fire and just stare there for hours, making mm. sure the line is secure. Mm. <laughs> so you can get really bored. <laughs> so, yeah. I, uh, I used to chew quite a bit. That was probably the hardest thing I ever had to quit. Like that was hard. Like, yeah. It's habitual. Having, yeah. Well, it's, Every morning, have a coffee, put in, a, put put in a chew, and it was like the best thing ever. And then once it's not there anymore, it's just like, what do I do, man? I don't know what to do. Like it's just, it, you're so used to it. See, I've been just, I've been a health and fitness nut for so long. I just knew too much, like yeah. mouth mouth cancer and gum issues and everything else. I'm like, you know what? I got there's enough things that could be killing me out there. Let's let's not let's not add that on the list. Yeah, right, <laughs> so yeah, I just right. never did it. Um, but, you know, teach their own. I think it's powerful that you were able to break yourself of that habit. That's it not was, easy. It wasn't easy. No, it was, it was cold turkey. And it was probably the hardest thing that I ever had to do because. So what I, was your breaking point? What was your Ernest Hemingway moment? What was your reasoning for saying, you know what? I'm done. <sighs> you know what? I wish it was as simple as I had, you know, I looked at my kids or I wish it was like that but it wasn't it was i could notice like my gums just they were just disappearing they were they were just going Ooh. and and it was like it started getting real sensitive and bleeding constantly and it scared the shit out of me it was like if i don't quit this it's going to take my life it could possibly take my life it could take my jaw it could take you know i won't be able to, yeah I, I won't be able to kiss my kids anymore i won't be able to kiss my wife i won't be able to do anything like I need to stop this. Like it was getting to the point where I had to. Um, How long ago was that? That was probably about two years ago. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't too, too like far. like every other hard decision in life. Let me guess. The next ninety days wasn't easy, was it? Oh my god! Like I had to like get the sunflower seeds. I had to get <laughs> like you know, I had to get chewing gum, and I had to put it right there. And I I mean it's it is an obsession. Like and I always put it on one side. So if I, I couldn't put it on, on the other side just because it was too sensitive. But once you roughen up that skin underneath, it's like you just put it right in there. It, it develops like a little slot. So anything fits in there really. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, when I quit, it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do because it, to me, it was, there's nothing better than chewing. Like it was just, it was crazy. It's habitual. That's, that's, that's the only, that's the, only, the way when I saw like literally half my crew dipped, chewed, whatever you want to call it. So, mm -hmm. and it's just, it was the way of life. It yeah. doesn't mean I had to follow it. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I got a lot of Marine friends too. Like I'm a big, um, like Marine buff. Like I love the Marines. I love anything like that really. But uh, that's that they all, all they chew, they chew all the time just because they chewed over there when they were uh, over in Iraq and Afghanistan and they came back home and they just do it all the time. And, you know, I get around them and it's so hard not to do it, man. I tell you what, uh, you know, it's funny. One of my best friends here, we were hanging out, having a bro night last night, you know, just to help to actually further answer your question. Like, uh, I, I was putting all my energy into my fiance cause it, this is really her dog. It became my dog, but in mm a -hmm. uh, uh, little background on vets, um, the veterinary profession has a very high rate of suicide, mm. uh, because of the strain of, you know, ending you know, people's loved animals lives. It's over and over again. Mm -hmm. Not, not good. So I take that very seriously. So when Cal or Calvin, our coon hound, started having issues and we were planning all this stuff over the past month and a half, it was like, dear God, like I was just trying to put as much as I could into her. And I knew, like, because I know a lot more than I did five years ago, but I know, okay, there's only so much energy to be expelled. You have to recharge. Um, I'm very big into psychology. I studied that when I was in school. So yeah, I mean, when he, my buddy called me up yesterday, he's like, do you have any plans this weekend? I'm like, honestly, I don't because I've been so busy with growing the business and podcast and taking care of Kristen and taking care of Calvin and 
all this stuff. I was like, yo, it's guy night tonight. Mm -hmm. Like you and I are going out to dinner. We're gonna have a nice scotch. Mm -hmm. Just, and just hang and talk. Because yeah. yeah. he, he's actually going through a divorce right now too. So it's like, I, I get to be there for him. He gets to be there for me. Get quality bro time. Yeah. Um, you be mature, emotional adults and talk through shit. Stop trying to be the tough guys that, you know, you know, don't show weakness. You know, it's okay to show vulnerability. I've been big about that on this show. I'm sure you can appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. I love that. <laughs> um, cause I'm part of your brand, your superior self is that I mean, this is a whole other podcast. We could probably talk about this when I come on your show, but it's like <clears throat> the sooner you start embracing vulnerability, I didn't get it until the past couple of years when my fiance, well, back when we were just boyfriend, girlfriend, she broke up with me. And because I just, I had so many walls up and I was a bachelor for so long and the firefighting life did not help with it. It was the same thing from the military world. Like you're, you keep yourself so focused and you don't allow other distractions. Right. Plus I saw like my fellow fire brothers, like they're, they were all stressed cause they were worried if their girlfriend or their fiance or their wife was cheating on them while they were off on a fire. I was like, this is why I stayed single. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to worry about any of that. <laughs> <laughs> So, but I, I didn't realize the negative impacts yeah. on your emotional state. And the, because when you shut all that down and you don't allow it to happen, it's not just a rusty factor. It's like, dude, you're not balanced. You're not living a balanced life. Like you get this cause you're, you know, you're a husband, you're a father. Uh, it's a whole different level of programming. Yeah. You have to let shit happen to you, man. Like you have to honestly live your life and your life only like you have to wake up every day and just live your life the best that you can. And when I say that, I don't mean like, uh, try to be a bit best version of yourself. You just have to go out there and you're going to, you got to expect shit to happen to you. Like it's going to, that's how you get stronger. Like you get, you know, somebody breaks your heart. All right. Well, something else will grow in its place that hurt, that pain will only last for a couple months or so, six months, mm -hmm. a year, maybe, I don't know, but it all depends on the person. But when that pain leaves, that callus or that, that hard spot will grow in its place and you'll be a better person for that. Um, same thing with uh, the Marines. Like I have a friend that used to be in the Marines and he went to Army Ranger school, came out, used to be a sniper. And he's hardcore, like, man. yeah, it's yeah. Oh, he, dude is legit. Um, he actually works with me. And his philosophy is, man, like, I have to live with a lot of shit, shit that happened to me. But if God didn't think I could handle it, he would have, he would have gave it to somebody else. Ooh. Yeah. I love that. That's good. Do you, do you, does he or you listen to those, um, the, uh, uh, any of the Navy SEAL books or, or, or read them, read them. I, I'm an audio book guy because I'm a podcaster. So I, <laughs> I really, I really wish every, every author, didn't just write the book that they also audio book. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, a big, I'm a big Jocko Willing fan. Um, oh yeah, dude. His podcast is legit. Yeah. He said, um, now there's a man who says it how it is. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I don't have a brand. I'm, I'm me. I'm Jocko. Like that's, he cracks me up with that. He's like, I'm not a brand dude. I'm Jocko. Okay. I'll give you that. And, uh, what else? he had some old Navy seals. Like I love when he brings in the old guys, uh, from like the, the, the old frogman that came that started this, you know, the, the, uh, the unit. And I read, ah, uh, I cannot believe I, I cannot remember it, but I read, I read a book. Um, like, uh, why am I forgetting it? I but, just looked up one of the books I read a Navy, Navy former Navy seal. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Uh, what is it? Fearless. Yes. The undaunted, hold on fearless. The undaunted it's, uh, it was written by Eric Blem. Phenomenal. It was, a, it, it was a story. I mean, the guy ended up dying, the, the, yeah. the seal, but yeah, what that dude went through, dude, like, cause he was like, if this is the same book we're talking about, like the guy was like a football star, like yep. athlete, mm -hmm. and then turned to alcohol and drugs mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. rebuilt himself to earn his way into being a seal. And I'm like, and then even once he achieved the seal, he still fell back and, mm -hmm. and made those mistakes again mm -hmm. and had to rebuild human. again. We're human, dude. We're human. Dude. Like who you, are, who you are right now, Scott, and who I am right now we built ourselves like we, we, we are not like, I don't know. Like I, right now I, I built this person that is talking to you right now on your podcast and, and we're I, still being built. Yes. Every day. And that's the goal, right? To build ourselves in this, in this person that we want to be And any day we could fall back any day, 
but it, you have to keep the strength inside of you. You have to keep the passion. You have to keep the disciplines that you do every day to keep pushing you and building yourself into that, into that role that you want to be or that person that you want to be. Yeah. See, uh, I'm loving this, man. Um, you know, on that, on that note, actually we can use this to help close the show out, but it's with, with your superior self, right? Your concept, like me, like answering your question earlier, I'll do one last screen share. Just to, this is my second year. First year, you're a rookie. <laughs> second year, they call you a snooky. You're a second year rookie. You still, you still don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks to my athleticism, I was actually, by the way, I was the old guy on the crew. Uh, oh. I was 31 and 32 when I decided to go do this. Really? Oh, well, yeah. Whereas normally hot shots are like, just like the military, you're 18 to like 24 yeah. is the average age. So yeah. I was like the age of my squad bosses. Oh. Um, so everybody, they, called, everybody called me old man. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I'm pop 31, Hey, bro. pop up. Pop up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, is a, this is a shot of my, that's it. This is, this is what you hiked with. Look at that so, stud. Yeah. Look, look at that guy. A little, Jacked up. A little, little bromance, you know. Yeah. But it's like, and let me tell you, so now to this day, to, I just want to get that full circle. Talking about what your theme there of putting in the reps and building yourself stronger every single day. There's one thing that I never let go of that job. It's my love of chainsaws. Really? Oh yeah. Uh, so there's a local park down in Roverman here that I used to help build some of the trails at years ago because I'm a huge mountain biker. So I volunteered. I, I just go down there every time a tree gets blown down. I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I run, I run, I, I launched a Facebook page for our trail system so people could reach out to me when it's time to take care of a tree issue. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I own three chainsaws and I literally have designed a backpack system. I mountain bike in with a chainsaw on my back. So it's, wow. uh, I mean, Brent, it's more of a portable saw compared yeah. to that, compared to that thing mm -hmm. that I hiked with. Like that, that saw was, I mean, you had a, that had a 28 inch bar on it and, and, a, and a hell of a power head. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, so that's, that's some part of my Zen. That's like awesome. right now. My buddy's got a, a tennis pro facility out in New Jersey. It's mm -hmm. about an hour and a half from here. And two weeks out of last month, I was out there cutting through his jungle behind him. Cause he wants to turn into like an outdoor entertainer. I'm like, yo, it's like, that's North Jersey money. They're going to charge you thousands of dollars to work on the trees. Yeah. I was like, you're going to take me out to nice steak dinners. <laughs> and then you're going to cover my expenses. And I'm going to go in there and I'm going to rape the shit out of those trees. With my chain <laughs> for you. And he's like, that sounds like a great idea. So, yeah, let's, do it. <laughs> let's do it. I'll take you out to a nice steak dinner. Yeah. It's like, okay, thousand dollars per tree or take Scott to a steak dinner and let him get, get, get into his Zen moment by running a chainsaw. <laughs> um, that's awesome. He literally has, he has five massive slash piles I built and there's still more to go. And then when we're all done, I'm going to, I'm going to help him rent one of those big chipper shredders. And we're going to basically cover the whole hillside with the, basically the mulch uh, mm -hmm. from the tree mm -hmm. material. So it's awesome. Yeah. This is, this is what I do. So <laughs> meanwhile, in my profession, I do online sales and marketing growth and I build people's brands and businesses, but mm -hmm. that's not as exciting as running a chainsaw. For me. Well, I mean, come on now. <laughs> I, I doubt it is. No. So that helps, helps you understand a little more about how I Zen out. Um, I balance my life, but see, I didn't know these things back to your mm -hmm. point, right? Mm -hmm. I had to put in all these different reps and yes, I'm an outdoorsy nut. Like I, I ski, I, I mountain bike, I rock climb, I skydive, you know, I, I don't have kids for this exact reason. I mm -hmm. want to be able to make sure there's no chance in hell. somebody can interrupt that. Like my kid mm -hmm. is our dog. <laughs> so, uh, and I will say though, in the past week, especially the past two weeks, I've, I think I start understanding a little bit more about the responsibility as a parent, Like he's been my dog for five years as we've been together, but she's had him for 10. And I don't think the parenting gene really kicked in until the past two weeks. Really? It was like, whoa, like it was, it was like, cause like, what if he could die? Right. Yeah, I know he's, yeah. I know for some people it's like, it's a dog, not a, not a human, but I'm sorry. He's our dog. He, he's our kid. Like mm -hmm. he is a member of the family. So, uh, I mean, Calvin used to be able to chase my mountain bike while mountain biking and howl and, and like, and then try and get ahead of the, of the, all my buddies. And then he, he'd be leading the ride. Now he can't do that anymore. So, um, mm. so it, it's definitely been a, a, more of a metamorphosis in the past few weeks because of the medical issues and the cancer and the surgery and trying to save his life and literally thousands of dollars to save this dog. So, uh, I've never spent that much on the dog ever. <laughs> Yeah, so, tell me about it. We got a golden retriever and 
uh, nothing is cheap. Like I remember the no, first day it we isn't. Up, like we took it to the vet and I'm like, are you kidding me, dude? Like what, like back in the day, they didn't do shit. Like here I am spending $1,200 on shots. Yeah. It's insane. And then they're like, do you, do you guys want some health insurance for the dog? I'm like, what? No, I don't want health insurance for the dog. Are you kidding me? No. My wife's looking at me. She's like, we're not giving it back. No, I don't care. Well, like I guess we, we picked him up from uh, two days of IV fluid treatment over over 48 hours uh, just to try to flush his system to try and kickstart his kidneys again to save him. And luckily, my fiance went to school with that vet. So she only charges 250 bucks for that session. So I was mm. like, oh, that could have been a lot more. So it pays to know people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they got crazy services now for dogs. They got, I mean, look, in Baltimore, they have dog walkers that are making over a hundred grand a year. It's insane. Like it's insane. That sounds like LA shit. I yeah. mean, that's, or New I mean, York City it, shit. I mean, yeah. but, I mean, you do like, I'll, shit, I'll walk 10 dogs. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Take, make a hundred grand. I mean, I don't mm-hmm. know. Picking up, picking up the shit might be a problem, but, uh, that's uh, a lot of shit. That's a lot of shit. Yeah, that's a lot of shit. Oh, oh, damn. I mean, is that's a hundred, hundred grand worth. I mean, you can, I don't know. That's, that's, if you, if you, if you look at the dollar value to uh, labor ratio, I don't know. I guess it comes down to what, what balances you makes you happy. So get up, get up when you want, uh, go to work. They don't talk back to you. They're always happy to see you. You're right? outdoors a lot. Yeah, outdoors a lot. Get some exercise, throw yeah. them some tennis balls, hang out. I think it could be a good thing. It's possible. Yeah. Maybe you and I are doing something wrong. <laughs> Well, so let's full circle this back to you and your brand. Help sure. close the show out. Sure. Uh, everything you've done to create this, you know, how many shows are you in your show now? 36. 36 up online. And this is a classic example of what your, your earlier point was, which is putting in the reps and um, building this your superior self brand concept, right? This lifestyle concept, this inspiration that you're trying to get back to the blue collar as you hinted at it, right? So. Mm-hmm. You got your dad, honest dad blog on there and everything else. So 30 some shows in, is that just one of the ways you're helping build your superior self? Like what else would you give an example on? Just Absolutely. For a listener, right? Absolutely. Like yeah. this has not been an easy thing for me. Like I am a very, like I feel like I'm outgoing, but I get nervous all the time in social situations. Like whenever I am at a party, like it takes me a while to like, warm up and and communicate with others i just feel awkward like this Mm. podcast forces me to like get outside of myself and it's whenever i'm outside of myself that i start to grow as a person like and it sucks it sucks so bad because i'm so comfortable just hanging in the house like watching tv doing work or whatever working on my brand Mm -hmm. but it's you're not gonna grow unless you get outside of your comfort zone like you're just not gonna do it so this podcast has allowed me to one, start talking to other people and interview others. And it's like, a, it's like so cool because I get to talk to a bunch of influencers that around Baltimore and around this, you know, around the country who are doing great things. And I'm ta- I get to talk to them and, and take notes and find out what they're doing. And so it helps me as an entrepreneur, get their secrets, their little, um, their little techniques that they use to build their brands. And it's, it's like a, it's a win-win for me. Cause I'm also speaking like right now, like, I never thought that I'd be uh, on your show, Scott, no. and, and, and hanging out with you and talking to your audience. Like, if I was still that same person that I was 30 shows ago, 30 shows ago, <laughs> I'd be on cruise control looking towards retirement. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, right now, I. And am, you still can look forward to retirement, but what are you going to learn along the way? Yeah. Right? All yeah. The, that's why I don't understand going back full circle back to your earlier part in the show where it's like, stuck on a hamster wheel or on a treadmill Mm -hmm. and just like, well, that's my end result. Mm -hmm. And you're just happy doing that. I, and again, again, everybody's at a different place in the timeline, Yeah, but it, it blows my mind. If, I mean, listen, if that's what truly, truly at the deepest depths of your heart makes you happy dude, go for it. If that's all you care about is, Hey, I I have my goals set. I'm going to retire at 50. I got my retirement plan, my 401k, blah, blah, blah. Awesome. But to me, I'm like, well, what are all these other things like you and I, mm-hmm. what are the things you're missing out mm. that you're learning along the way that you could be sharing with other people? Yep. Well, think about it. Like Les Miles said, you know, the richest place in this world is a cemetery. 
because that's where all the dreams are. That's where all the, the, the people that wish they could have done something better. That's where the ideas are. Like mm-hmm. think about you on your deathbed right now. And the people that are surrounded you are the people that you could have been like saying, why didn't you choose to be us? Like, why sure. didn't you, why didn't you choose to do this, go down this path? Like my hell on earth is meeting the person that I could have been. I, I got a good friend of mine, actually the guy who owns a tennis facility. He and I spent 11 years, uh, ski race coaching together, kids here in the Pocono mountains, uh, race team. And I, I've done a lot of stuff. I joked around like bouncing, firefighting. Like I, he, he literally joked around. He asked me one day, we were hanging out in the, in the, uh, the coach's office. And he's like, Scott, here's a piece of paper and pen, write down every job you've done. Now this was like, this is years ago. I mean, and, and he's like, how many jobs have you had? I'm like, well, depends. I mean, I didn't have to, but I, I, I remember when I was in the corporate space, I was still bouncing until I moved into executive management then another time, but I was bouncing and I was teaching spinning classes at a gym. Mm-hmm. Then I got into ski race coaching and I was still teaching spinning and I was still working my corporate job. Then I went back to school and I was still ski race coaching. I was still spinning. I was still working the corporate job. Then I gave it all up and went firefighting, you know, for two years. But then I'd come back in the winter during the off season and still go coach ski racing because I love that. And you didn't do it for the money. Trust me, there's no money there. Um, And then I'd go back firefighting. And then I moved, you know, Arizona, Colorado. It's the point is like, it's experience. And Mm -hmm. there's so many people like they used to criticize me because they said, well, dude, He's like, you were supposed to go to Penn State and be an engineer. He's like, all these years later, you could be a master engineer. And I'm like, sounds pretty freaking boring. Like just doing the same job day in and day out. And that's mm-hmm. it. Like, mm-hmm. I can't even, now at 41, I'm young. Mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, I can't even fathom that. Yeah. I mean, I, I would ask people, like I still ask people, and I'm sure you do the same thing. Uh, hey, what's going on, Trey? How you doing? Man, 30 more years, 25 more years. I got a, I got a freaking retirement clock on my phone. that lets me know when I'm going to retire. Like, are you kidding me, dude? Like that sounds like a death clock. Yeah. Like a countdown, right. You, like, you might not even make it that far, dude. Like you might not make it to retirement. You have to realize that you might not make it. And you know what? You're going to be waiting till retirement. You're wasting your life. You're looking forward to, to something that might not happen. Yeah. You need, you need to look forward to the tomorrow. You need to look forward and wake up and be grateful and show gratitude that you woke up this morning and we are living in the greatest country in the world. We have all these opportunities. We have Google for Christ's sake <laughs> at our fingertips. And you we can take that for granted. Yes. If you don't know something, Google it, YouTube it. That's what I did. I had no clue how to start a podcast. Dude, I call YouTube, YouTube university, <laughs> right? You I, have, I, you have I literally on podcasting too, right? Your car, there's no excuse. If you're on a commuter, your car should be your mobile university. Yes, podcast, audio books. Uh, YouTube Red now. YouTube Red. If you have YouTube Red, you could play the YouTube video in the background and still have your GPS up, mm-hmm. and it's just like listening to a podcast. Like, yeah. there's no excuse. I had no idea how to build a website, like the one that you're looking at. <laughs> even the, the one that you're looking at, the one that I like, not, that. I like the website, dude. It's okay. I mean, I did not know how to do it, so I had to YouTube it, right? So it looks like it's been YouTubed pretty much. I mean, I have a couple of things on there that are not bad. Like if you go to the homepage, like yeah, that's I spent, my favorite part right there. Like weeks, bro. Weeks it took me to build this i had no clue but you took action and you did it absolutely it take it all it start it starts with one step bro it starts with right. one step Dude, I, I built live the fuel.com myself that's amazing and, and then when i launched uh uh my podcast i had to migrate the site i use podcastwebsites.com as the back end of my system so mm-hmm. i actually had to leave my old site behind and then rebuild it on their platform because i just wanted seamless I, I want to make sure the podcast had no effort to me at all. Cause I, yeah. I knew that I wasn't, I wasn't launching a podcast to make money. Yeah. Right? I, I, it was a, it wasn't supposed to be a cash stream. Yes. It builds influence. Yes. It, mm-hmm. it's actually landed me a couple of marketing clients. Awesome. Yeah. But yeah. so that technically my show has been monetized because I've gained clients because of, but I don't have ads. I don't have mm-hmm. sponsors. Like, mm-hmm. so I just, I don't care, but I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Dude, you should have seen, you should have, you should listen to my first podcast. It's like, I will. It is hilarious because it's like i'm so scared i'm so tense i i this is my first interview like i need I to go a, back and listen to my first episode oh my god dude i had scripted it i was like hi my name is trey welcome to your <laughs> superior self 
Like it's insane. Like, dude, I, I I had somebody on the show a couple of weeks back, and they're like, "Man, you re- you sound really good." I, he's like, "I love how he's like you actually have the voice inflection and the changing and the raising and the lowering." As I was reading his bio, he's like, "That was one of the best reads of my bio ever." And this guy was like a well-known author, yeah. public speaker, and so I was honored that he said that. I said, "Yeah, I, I definitely did not speak this way as a podcast host two years ago." <laughs> Dude, you got it, bro. I mean, you definitely experience, right? It's with anything like you have to keep going. Like that's what makes you successful is that you keep going when others want to quit or do they do quit? You know, like, I mean, as we're recording this, uh, it's been over, it was two years in September. So this is November 17th as we're recording this and I have 230 shows up online. Wow. So is your, show weekly or two shows a week shows a week that's insane that's since founding content. i've never broken it that is crazy content that is <laughs> that is crazy content that's crazy right like i i, I kind of freaked myself out i was like because at first i was going to go for three and i'm like uh maybe i need a little life balance and mm. um, it's a lot to put in an episode dude like it is yeah. that people don't realize that it's a lot it, it, but you know what i love about it is the creativity that you can apply to it, the the finding out what people really like and you can see the stats and when they dip off and stop listening and when you can kind of like, all right, let me just change it up a little bit here and, and try something different. So oh, yeah, like, uh, tomorrow I'm going to record a solo episode. I've only done it, I think, two times ever in the show's history, maybe three. Mm-hmm. But after that Facebook live session the other day and me venting, I decided I want to make a podcast around that theme and, and just uh, every so often I like to just dip people back into my life solo mm-hmm. I, as you can tell today, I kind of let it trickle out a little bit. Um, but I, I'm actually finishing writing a book right now. I've never, really? I, I'm not an author. Like, okay, now I'm an author. So, so are you writing it yourself or you do have, do you have a gross ghost writer? No, it's me. Really? Dude. Are you going to self publish it? Yep. My man. That's what I'm talking about. Dude. It's, My man. it's, I, <laughs> it's, it's been crazy, but I, I, to, to practice to your, back to your point, there was a local magazine that I had met through some networking two years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called network magazine for businesses. And then I, you know, I'm the, I'm the health and fitness nut and mm-hmm. people see it in my, in my Instagram and everything else. And all of a sudden they reached out to me early last year, or actually last winter. And they said, Hey, we want to reconnect. Uh, they have a podcast. They're nowhere near at my level. And, uh, I don't mind patting myself a little bit on my back compared to those guys. And, and they said, dude, he's like, uh, actually we were wondering if you can write a piece on lifestyle for the magazine. So I did. Wow. And and, and I didn't really take it that seriously. And then they kept saying, Hey, can you do it again? Can you do it again? I've been published in four back-to-back issues now. <laughs> and I got to, I got to submit a piece by December 1st again, if I want to be in the next issue, but they keep inviting me back. So that's awesome, bro. And so Mary Shores, yeah. our mutual contact, she's like mm-hmm. on our podcast together. She's like, Scott, you do know that you're already an author, right? I'm like, <laughs> why? She's like, do you know many people wish they could be podcast and, or sorry, be published in any magazine? Absolutely. And I was like, I never really thought about it that way. Yeah. So when's the book, when do you plan on releasing that? Hopefully early next year. Yeah. yeah. I'm def- I, I've officially moved into editing now. So I'm, I'm, I have to go back and now put my chapters all together. And because mm-hmm. I, I basically, because I, I don't have the time, I don't like, I don't like making the time to sit down and write. Yeah. So my hack was I, I voice transcribed everything. That's perfect. So when I'm driving on business, instead of listening yeah. to podcasts, I pause podcasts, activate a voice transcription app, and I just talk my chapter. And then mm-hmm. when I get home, I just export the file as a text file, put it into Word, and there's my chapter. <laughs> Perfect. That's awesome, dude. I'm definitely getting, I'm getting that bad boy. I'll tell you that much. I appreciate that. Well, it's going to be, um, I believe the title's not going to change, but it's probably be called So You Want to Be a Hot Shot. Oh, I like that. And, uh, it, but it's going to be around the symbolism of the word hot shot, but obviously tying into the firefighting experience and the, and the mm-hmm. life lessons I learned from that and just giving a much more deep, deep dive into that background. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to donate 50% of all proceeds of the book uh, to fallen firefighters. Oh, that's, that's beautiful, man. That is so, awesome. I love that. Yeah. That's great. Um, I, I decided, I'm like, I'm not writing a book. Anybody who writes a book and thinks they're going to make millions of dollars, no. I'm writing the book because I didn't need to get the story out there. Mm-hmm. And if I can get through to people mm-hmm. that maybe can't hear it on the podcast, who aren't, some people aren't into podcasting. Some people want a book. Mm-hmm. But then if I can create something that can also give back at the same time, that's what, that's what finally got me to pull the trigger. I've been talking about writing a book for three years. Yeah. Well, a lot, of, a lot of people look at it now as like another notch in their belt or like, it's like, it's something, well, I, I think that it's awesome that you're doing it. Um, but I think most people nowadays, especially, uh, 
motivational speakers, they just want it to say, I'm an author, you know what I mean? Or they'll, they'll, um, I don't know. I don't know. I just, feel I, like- I would agree with you. Actually, people basically said, Scott, if you want to increase your public speaking, it really helps if you're an author because mm-hmm. like, Oh, he's a published author. Yeah. So I was like, fine. I'll, I'll that'll, I'll, I was going to write the book anyway. <laughs> yeah. If that helps me get on stage and, and help positively influence other people more. Great. I love yeah. telling my story. So, yeah. but something like that where you can donate 50% of the proceeds to a great organization or a great cause, dude, yeah. like I'm all, all up for that, bro. Like you got to get that. Well, that's, that's how I look at it. I'm like, there should be no reason why somebody wouldn't want to buy a book. They know they're also giving back at the same time. Like I switched my business two years ago over to a four purpose business model. So I have it hard coded that I, right now it's, it's still not a huge amount because I'm wiping out some past debt from other business adventures that I attempted, but I have hard coded 5% of all my gross income gets set aside into a four purpose business account that's used for charitable activities. So hmm. technically as my business grows and as I succeed, I can also influence more not-for-profit activities hmm. because it's a hard coded percentage. So even if it's only 5% of all of a sudden I have a, hundred thousand dollar year. Well, 5% mm-hmm. is already hard coded and set aside mm-hmm. for not for profit activities. That's so awesome. I love it. I love yeah. it. So, well, listen, I'm looking forward to popping on your show. I got to hop on your calendar. Um, Absolutely. We, we, uh, we went a little long for him tonight. Like that's never happened on this show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so listen, I always want to give the honor of closing out the show and having some final powerful words to my guest co-host. And I love everything behind your brand and what you're doing. Um, I'm excited for the growth of your show and, uh, and the growth of you along that road. Cause I will tell you the podcast has helped me grow. Um, is there some final words that's all encompassing behind everything you're doing right now that you'd want to leave behind for the audience? Just kind of sum up who you are and what you're trying to do in case they forget everything else we talked about tonight. Sure. Absolutely. I want to say to you, the listener that doesn't matter what it is that you're thinking about right now, whether it's business or, uh, personal fitness or investing or being a father or a spouse, all it takes is one action, one step into that direction and opportunities will open up that you never thought that maybe you might've been there. Like for me, it was, I didn't think that I was gonna be a podcaster. I had a dream that I wanted to make a difference in the world. I wanted to voice my opinions about self growth and self betterment. And I just took one step. I went to Google and I YouTube how to be a podcaster and I learned how to put a show together and a website. And now I'm over here talking to Scott getting after it about self betterment and self growth. So don't be afraid to take that step and don't, and don't hesitate because the more, more time that you take, the, the, the less opportunity to get better or faster it's, you know, you're losing time. And I, the biggest regret that I have is, is not starting sooner. So that's, that's pretty much it, man. Like just get after it. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Well, hang tight. I want to give you a proper goodbye off the air. I, I couldn't have said a bet, guys. Like, do better. It, it's do not have regret in life anyway. But obviously, don't have self regret because you've just failed to take action. Start taking action. Even the smallest action will build that momentum. And Trey has defined that tonight. So again, yoursuperiorself.com. Check it out. Uh, go subscribe to the podcast. Listen to it. I'll be uh, coming on the show soon. I'm excited for him. And uh, again, this is what it's all takes. It, it's sometimes just a matter of launching a site and launching a podcast. You don't have to do that. Go read a book, go listen to a new podcast you've never listened to before. Get yourself outside of your comfort zone. So again, ladies and gentlemen, that was Trey Downs of your superior self.com. I feel we definitely fueled your health, your business and your lifestyle tonight. Uh, so without further ado, thanks for tuning into another podcast show. Looking forward to talking to you guys again on the next episode. Again, your superior self.com. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, you too can live the fuel.